Do you gotta see this, man? They're bats. Look at them hanging right there. There's six. Shine the light at him. Stop shining the light. Don't wake him up. Oh my gosh, I'm scared for you. Hey there. Well, hello um, again. My name is Derek and in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I got rid of my bat problem. Bats, you know, like the ones in the attic. Just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional. This is not professional advice. Anything I'm saying is just from my experience and what works for me. Um, I definitely recommend if you are able to get a professional to deal with your bat issue, highly recommend that you do that. So I wanna start off with kind of telling you a little backstory about how I found out about my bat problem. I would say maybe three weeks ago ish or maybe a little bit before that I had a friend come over and he was leaving and as he was leaving he looked up and he's he said he saw like a bat near the gutter in, in the side of the house in the corner I thought oh, okay I didn't really think it was that big of a deal because I hadn't been hearing them and uh, it didn't really seem that big of a deal to me so I just let it go I would say probably a week or two later I came in one day and I heard some weird squeaking, some weird weird noises. And I was looking around and I, uh, I was coming near the door. I kept hearing, I looked up and there was a bat in my house, man. It was up on the brick. Yeah, yeah, see this picture? It was pretty frantic trying to get rid of this bat. Eventually, my neighbor helped me get it out. So thankful for him. Made me realize that, hey, I need to kind of look into see what's going on here. You gotta see this, man. They're bats. Look at them hanging right there. There's six. Six. Oh, they're moving. Oh my gosh. Dude, don't shine the light at them. Stop shining the light. Don't wake them up. Oh my gosh, I'm scared for you. So, wasn't that crazy? Wow. That was like six bats. I've never seen that many bats in my life. I don't ever, and growing up, I'd always been a Batman fan. When I was like four year old, four years old, I had gotten a bat, uh, Batman for a gift. And since then, I even had a Batman collection. And, and so after this whole incident, bats and uh, Batman is not really my favorite anymore. I did start doing research, you know, like we do. We started looking online. It said that uh, mothballs, cinnamon, peppermint, essential old water would help. So I went to Walmart, got all that stuff, put it out, but it didn't really help. I put them on the ledge. So they're still there. There's six of them, but I just let it right there. Hopefully they'll get a wolf of that. Oh, I was looking, if you look. Right, see that? That's just like a hole in the wood. We gotta fill that in when you come, but. I won't shine the light on them. All right, so right now they're on the outside. They are where that uh, film has not been broken through, so like they can't get to me right now. <coughs> Anyways, uh, we gotta replace that, which I think is gonna be better than we're using the metal because uh, I don't think they'll be able to tear through it like that. So as I was also researching you know, I came to find out that the way that you get rid of the bats is to seal out all the exits except for one and make a one-way exit. So the very first thing I had to do was to seal off the inside of the inner gable in my attic. So I had a friend who helped me to do this. Uh, you'll see some, some clips where we had to cut the wire mesh, be stapled, we got some of the putty goo or whatever it's called that you fill in the cracks and was uh, maybe not the most professional job, but it absolutely kept them from getting in the attic, and uh, you'll see that in a clip.
sorry folks so about to go up up in the attic and put up some of this mesh so that they can't get in from the uh the gable and so here we go So what we're doing now is uh, he just sealed the corners and a hole that we had with the great stuff. Also with this stuff. And so the next thing we have to do is put up some wire mesh so that they cannot get in. Which is about to be a chore. Which is a chore. Right now we know where they're at. They're in the corner on that side. And they're trying to get out. But they're trying to get out. my friend and I sealed off the inside of the attic they the, the bats definitely could not get in the attic but they were still uh, at a crack between the chimney column and the gable so I need to go out and purchase some screen mesh and somehow make a one-way exit I really wasn't sure how I was gonna make the one-way exit now I had saw uh, where some folks were selling you know a specific ones to get rid of bats and I'll link those in the description below but I really wasn't sure what I, what I was gonna do and so I had been praying about this daily I would say God you know just help me with my bad issue and so you know I got to Lowe's and I came across a video which I'll link below where this they had this clear tube and so I was like okay and I asked the lady at Lowe's I was like hey do uh, you know where I get this she told me to go to the shop lighting aisle and I found this big long tube clear to where which I was able to cut and after I did that I was walking around Lowe's I came across a guy that actually he's like you got a bad problem I was like yeah how did you know he's like that's what I do he had he worked for a company which I'll, I'll link below where he actually gets rid of bats they have to get a, a rabies shot and a booster every year and I highly recommend that you you reach out to one of those if you can because while my issue turned out to be very small, there was, there was very little bat poop. And the bat poop has to be cleaned up afterwards because it's, it's, not, it's not very healthy. And so just want to note here, bats are very dangerous. Some of them do carry rabies and it is against the law to kill them. Don't try to exterminate them. Definitely try to get rid of them by sealing off the exits like I'm describing here. So once I got home, I had to borrow a ladder from my dad. So I got the ladder up there and I begin to cut the screen mesh and then I begin taping it up to the gable from the outside. I had to get a stapler even. Uh, you'll see this footage where for my GoPro where I'm stapling up. Uh, my mom's handing me up tape uh, to tape up the, the places on the brick. And I was actually praying that God would send an angel and just hold that in place because it really wasn't one to stick needed to. So the night that I put up all the mesh and I cut out the tube and I put it up, which you'll see in the footage. So I got a mask, I got the goggles, some GoPro, um, got a ladder. So come come with me, I'll show you something real quick. If you look up here in this corner, 
uh, you'll see uh, that there's a crack where they're getting inside of the, the outside top part here. And so we gotta seal that off and kind of make like a bat trap. So we're gonna try to do that now. So here we go. trying to get footage of a bat coming out but I was not able to I did see a bat come out but it was just too quick for me to catch on video but my neighbor Ronaldo he's gonna tell you about how he saw them leave uh, here he is later on that night after you left uh, I brought my kids out here because I definitely wanted them to see him because it's an experience so uh, me and my oldest daughter came over and she came to see him with me but my youngest daughter didn't and we both came over here and when we looked up there there was about eight of them up there. They were all stuck behind the uh, fencing you have up there, but they were getting out one by one. And my youngest daughter, the funny thing is, my youngest daughter was kind of nervous about coming. So she stayed on our side of the uh, carport. And the moment she said that, and when she walked off, one flew out and went literally right where she was, definitely. I mean, it was a wonderful experience. I enjoy animals, man. So I was so thankful that all the bats were gone. A couple days later, I made sure to go in the attic and just check, make sure they were all gone. And you know, I'm so thankful they were they were gone. This was something that I was really concerned about. I was so thankful that God answered my prayers. I've been praying and he sent my friends to help me. And I was so thankful for them. You know, the final thing that, that I, you know, I needed to do was to walk around the house and just make sure that there's no gaps where they could come back in, right? So, you know, you do that perimeter look and you just kind of scope out the whole roof and, the, you know, see if they can get in the attic. You know, you remember when I told you that my friend mentioned, hey, you have a bat in your house and, and I just kind of ignored him until I, I came into my house one day and I'm like, oh, there's a bat. Well, you know, sin can happen in our lives like this also. The Holy Spirit will will tug, tug on your heart and he'll be like you don't need to do that you don't need to let that in you need to deal with that you need to to stop and address what's going on in what you're letting into your heart and into your life just like I needed to address uh, when my friend mentioned the bat and so many times it takes until we have a colony of bats in our lives until we have a it's a big deal we wait to deal with these things if we would just deal with it early on when the Holy Spirit begins to touch on our heart, it would be a lot easier. So thankful, you know, the friend in this situation would just, uh, just in an analogy, represent the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus to help us get the sin out of our life. You know, there's a Bible verse. Ephesians 4.27 says, nor give place to the devil. And if you look at that word place, it's talking about territory which is so crazy because I was letting the bats in my territory and, and we don't want to give Satan or any any demonic spirits territory by conning us into sin, by letting us slip into something that's completely out of God's will, whether it be a relationship, whether it be video game, movie, whether it be unforgiveness or a grudge. You know, it's so important that we really just take a, a look at our lives. You know, just like what man trying to get rid of bats wouldn't walk around his whole house to make sure the bats couldn't get back in. What man wouldn't really look at his life to 
deal with the sin to make sure that you know that it's not going to come back you know and this sin issue is an issue that only the blood of Jesus can help us with the Bible says that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness for sins and Jesus shed his own blood for me and for you so that we can be forgiven it says that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and and we come to Jesus and we say Jesus help me free me cleanse me from my sin I, rep I want the sin gone. I repent. I don't want to do that anymore. That's not the life I want. He will help. He will cleanse us. He will get all the sin out. Just like all the bats are gone now. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, that He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I just want to urge you today, to, to if you have allowed sin in your life, and the Holy Spirit was prompting you, or maybe you, you, you've never even given your life to Jesus, made Him your Lord and your Savior, and I would just encourage you to do that right now. That you say, Jesus, I acknowledge that you are my Savior, that you died for my sin in my place. And I invite you to come and live and dwell in me, to be my first love, to be my Savior, to be my Lord, and I ask you to just do a cleansing and a washing in me. Get all that territory, all that sin, all that junk out of me. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. That I might be born, a, born again. Be born of God. And be a whole new person. And I just thank you, God, that you've given us that gift. You've given me that gift. If you've done that, then you have been washed. You are a new son or daughter of God. You're on a whole different playing field. And God is so happy. You know, uh, all of heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. And if that's you, you, the Bible talks about how Jesus went out. He left the 99 and went for the one. That was you. So just be encouraged and... And, and just begin to draw into Jesus in your relationship with Him. It's all about Him. He is the, he is the life. He, is, he doesn't just possess life. In John 14, 6, He says, I am the life. If this video helped you, then share it with one person that you think it might can help. And if you have the new light in your life, go out and share your bright light.